Hi, my name is Andy Font, and today I'm going to be talking about ocean acidification. Now, before we start talking, we should know a little about how the carbon and water cycle are connected. Well, more of the carbon cycle is connected to the water cycle, anyway. So you all know there are carbon molecules up in our atmosphere, right? What you, do what you probably don't know is that sometimes the carbon seeps down into the ocean. Sometimes it's used in the process of photosynthesis, photosynthesis, photosynthesis through their pl through plankton, which is then eaten by which is then eaten by marine life, such as fish. And once a fish dies, decomposes, the carbon dioxide of the decomposition, and either goes back onto the atmosphere or stuck or stuck in a cycle within here, and starts all over again. Now on to the article. Okay, so today, so today we're going to be talking about an article. I read called Seafood and Ocean Acidification, which is about the rising acid levels in the coastal regions of the U in the coastal regions of the U.S. But instead of reading the entire thing, which would be kind of boring, I'm just going to sum it up. Along the coastal regions of the U.S., acidity levels in the oceans are rising, causing the local shellfish populations, such as oysters or clams, to die in early stages of life. This is caused by a large amount of CO2 in our atmosphere, which, as I explained to you before, often gets into the ocean. Now, with the, well, with the extra CO2 rising going to the ocean, that can often raise the acidity levels. And the same, th the same thing goes for industrial plants pl dump dumping most of their waste in the river and for fertilizers running, o running off of farms into the water. Now, I'm sure you're wondering why would this be in the news? I mean, it's just a bunch of expensive seafood you hack open near the fancy restaurants, right? But once again, the most coastal regions of the, the most coastal regions of the U.S. the shellfish industry is big bucks. Hatcheries for oysters and fishing for them are jobs most people have, and I and heavily rely on for their source of income. You take, if you take that away, you have hundreds of people without, without jobs. I mean, the Pacific Northwest alone lost $110 million and put the jobs of thousands on the line just to the oyster industry alone because of its certification. Ten mil hundred and ten million dollars. If you ask me, this problem is worthy enough to be news. Okay, so the biggest thing you can try and do to help is to try and reduce your carbon footprint. You can usually do this by take your bike or or walk your destination is a short distance away. Secondly, is to turn off your lights when you're not using them. I cannot stress to how important this is. The longer you have your, the longer you have your lights on, or the longer you have the switch on, the long, the more CO two is going to the atmosphere and into the ocean. The more energy you burn electronically or through electricity, that uses CO two, and the more you use it, the more it gets into the carbon atmosphere and the more into the atmosphere and the more it gets into the ocean. But if you really want to get into it, be sure to support the campaigns to stop industrial plants and farms from dumping their waste into the water. Research, research, and research and look to see if there are any local campaigns near you and see if you can join them. They could probably use your help. Remember, we only have one Earth, and it's our job to take care of it. Thank you for thank you for listening.